Okay, this one's more of a sewing project than anything else. I was asked to make a rifle case for a lever action rifle uh, out of suede, so cowhide suede splits, and he wanted the sheep wool like cloth lining inside of it. And what he's talking about there is this uh, like Sherpa. It's sort of a synthetic wool. Um, and this is a real fine nap stuff, but there's also some that can be used on saddles that's really thick. Um, um, I might also add some padding into it. I don't think so. I think for this, it's just going to be a case. Um, but if you want to add padding in between these two layers, you can just get quilt padding and use that. A pattern drawn up on some craft paper that was donated to me by somebody shipping stuff to me. Uh, often when you buy leather, they will wrap it in that craft paper as they ship it, uh, if you buy it online. So you can use that for patterns. I tend to keep it. Now the reason I have two pieces here is one of these pieces is actually going to be the part that's the flap that folds over at the end to close it up. But I don't think my suede's going to be big enough to make one whole piece with that flap on it. So what I'm going to lay out is my main body piece and then I'm going to cut the flat piece and just add it on. So for marking this I really like using um, it's a chalk marker uh, made for working with fabric and you can get different colors to chalk. I think it works better than a pin or something because it doesn't bleed through and make a problem that you have to deal with later. It marks okay on suede. Much better on cloth like a canvas. You can either mark this on a fold or you can just flip your pattern over like this. I might have enough chalk on my pattern to almost just lay it down on there and get a mark. It's basically a rifle shape. Let's get a stunt rifle out and make sure that this is going to fit. Um, I've got one that's a similar size, but not the same model. Okay, so that fits on there. Um, maybe a little looser would be better, but this is going to be kind of a custom fit to this. So it should be pretty close. Um, but yeah. Inside here right now, I've got a Marlin 336-3030. Um, very similar size, just a little bit shorter than the Winchester that I'm supposed to be making this for. And I think I can get away with this. Even once I've got all the seams stitched and rolled and it's going to get smaller, But I think I've got enough room. So we're going to continue on. Now, one last piece to cut out of the suede is the customer wants, just down at the last foot or so of the rifle case, he wants fringe on it. Okay, so I'm going to just take and mark a piece. Roughly about a foot back. And down and out. And I'm going to cut that out, trim it up a little bit, and that'll be the fringe panel that we'll sew in. And this one I'm actually going to cut just a little inside the line, maybe almost half an inch, because I want to sew it into a seam in that piece. Then that gives me that seam allowance I need for it. As I cut the fringe, some of this is going to get cut out as triangles, too, so that won't all be there. Now for the Sherpa piece, I'm just going to cut it on the fold, as cloth patterns refer to it. Um, grab a white piece of chalk for this. But I've got the, the fabric just folded over, 
And instead of doing the pattern flip thing, I'm just going to put right there on that fold. I don't have quite a wide enough piece for what I'm doing, but this is stretchy enough, it shouldn't matter. I have a couple different options of how I can put this together. I can do it like a sleeve on a coat, where I sew right sides together, turn the sleeve right side out, basically, to where the seam's on the inside, and then do the liner separately, put it in, and then sew it at each end. Um, that would make a nicer feel on the inside of it, and that's what you do on clothing. But on the case of a rifle case, I'm not sure that's necessary. So I may just do it the easier way, which is sew it all right sides together so basically the case inside out so it'll be fuzzy on the outside and then turn it around um, so we'll wind up with a seam on the inside though that'll be somewhat like um, this sort of sticking out which not necessarily a bad thing I'll trim it really nice uh, before I turn it right side out but it'll be the easiest way to go ahead and do this. So to set up to do that, we're just going to do, like I said, fuzzy side out. And let's not forget our fringe panel that we want to have in there. So that's going to be the trickiest part of this whole thing. And I may cut this into several pieces just to start with so I can get it to where it's going to stick out when I'm done. But I want to be able to fold them inside to where it's not my way while I'm stitching. And I'm just going to use some of this double-sided basting tape to do this. Now we can stick the cloth down the same way with the basing tape. Or we can just go ahead, clamp it in place, and start stitching. And I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some, just use these big metal paper clamps and stick the cloth together. You can use this on the leather too. I find that it's Leather tends to slip and slide around a little bit more with the sewing machine. So you got to be a little bit more careful with what you put it together with. So I usually use the um, basting tape for it. I feel like I'm sewing together a dog toy and I should put a squeaker in it. Yeah. I don't want to go quite to the end of it. Because I want to fold this back and roll that edge. And it's a little easier if you have it stitched all the way up to the end. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of trimming. Just to get a little bit closer to the stitches. Get off some of the extra fuzz, and then we can turn this right side out. Now with this sheep wool on here, it can be tricky sometimes to tell exactly where you're trying to trim. So 
I gotta be somewhat careful not to cut any of my stitches. And a really good heavy pair of shears can be very helpful for this because you're cutting through two layers of suede. You're cutting through almost, uh, in this case, seven or eight ounces of leather and a couple layers of cloth and you need a pretty sharp pair of scissors to cut through both of those. And a pretty sturdy pair to not do anything weird while it's doing it. All right. Now that it's stitched, do we get to the hard part? Turning it right side out. If you're really lucky, you can get it to start at this end, all the way down at the muzzle, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do this time. But if you can do that, then you can use a broom handle or something to straighten it out. But we may have to do this the other way around peeling it from this side and trying to pull it through. So I'm going to continue struggling with this off camera and once I've got it turned around right side out by simply pushing and pulling and tugging and eventually, like I said, you can take a broomstick and just push this through. Um, we'll see if I can manage to pull that off. Alright, now I'm about Halfway through getting this through this, I figured I'd show what I'm doing here. I do have a broomstick. It's just the broomstick. It doesn't have a broom still attached to it. Actually, never had a broom attached to it. But anyway, I just kind of open up the end and push the broomstick against it a few inches down in there. And then pull down on this bottom side of it. And it'll just push up until it pops out a little bit. And you just do a few inches at a time like that, three or four inches at a time. And the more you do it, the easier it'll get. Eventually you'll hit a spot that it kind of gets tangled up up in here and you got to sort of straighten it back out. And go on. Okay, almost there. Worked up a sweat where I had this last little bit where the fringe was in there. Once I got past most of that, I'm almost there. Kind of look it out real good there at the end. We got our two pieces hanging off here. They're going to be French, but otherwise, it is now all turned right side out. Now there's a lot of fancier ways to cut fringe, but I usually just use a pair of scissors and kind of eyeball it. Um, I consider that to be the traditional method. Though it would have been a knife and eyeballing it with a traditional method. But I just try for eh, about a quarter of an inch wide. You could use lace cutter, you could use rotary cutters. There's even fringe templates that you can find for cutting fringe that you just lay down on top of the leather and then use a rotary cutter or something through it. I actually don't mind and, and somewhat I prefer the slightly irregular shape you get by hand cutting. Trim up a bit here, take off that piece. Take off a triangle over here. Let's take a couple more pieces of fringe. So let's take another real thin fringe sized piece of triangle out of there occasionally. And just sort of even everything up a little bit as we go.
There we go. Fringe down on the end of it, just like asked for. All right, now a little more trimming on this end. Get some of this extra fuzz out of the way. Finish this off. I'm basically going to tuck that in and roll the leather over it and stitch it. And that only becomes a problem right here where we've got the seam because you wind up with leather lumps. It just gets too thick. So we're going to go ahead and take that off right there at that corner. The same on the other side. Last piece, of course, will be stitching on uh, the flap, which I'll probably do as part of rolling this around on one side. smoother. Okay. Now we just need to stitch a flap onto it. Either side will do. And we'll add a little string onto the flap to tie it in place. Should be all we need to do. trimming up string to tie it shut and we've got a case now for a quick way to put the ties on it I just I've got some half inch lace here half inch strip of soft leather and I just punched some half inch slots in it with a, a bag punch quick easy way you can throw some knots in it if you want to keep it from coming back out Of course, I probably don't. You can also throw a, uh, a rivet in the center here if you want to keep that lace from moving side to side or anything. But I think it'll be fine like this. So as mentioned before, this is actually for an old uh, Winchester reproduction. But I've got access to a Marlin 336, which has almost the same dimensions. Stock, action, distances. It's just a little shorter because it's more of a carbine style. So if it fits... The Winchester should fit. And this fits like that proverbial glove 